And this is a question I'm going to be asking all of my guests. The question is, who were you, Rahilio, before devoting your life completely to spirituality? Who was I? I was a, um, a young man who was open to life. I, I love sports, music, you know, social, dancing, party, this kind of thing. And... Um, you know, I was just a normal person. And uh, what triggered me was that um, as a teenager, many of my friends were smoking marijuana and experimenting with psychedelics. And I discovered right away that I was way more sensitive to that type of medicine than they were. And it began to push me into um, deep soul searching and also coming up some deep... Uh, uh, I, uh, encounter with death knocked on my door and when death knocked on my door I, I didn't understand why and there's nothing like feeling like you might die to make you get spiritual and start praying and so I began to have to uh, soul search and say why do I feel this what's going on what's and begin to jump into my psychology to understand what I was bringing through a kind of the primal uh, impulse you know uh, vulnerability and fear that it opened up into me to make me have to confront the mystery of the unknown. And that by, by praying and by willingly choosing to push myself into vision quest experiences, it made me have to pray to get through that and make contact with the, you know, my higher, uh, higher destiny, the higher powers that, you know, that started to connect with me. So it was through suffering. Uh, it was not suffering, but it was through confronting my fear and having to, and I didn't know I had any fear. That was a surprising thing to me because I didn't think I had fear. But when I opened up and all of a sudden losing my grip on the 3D, that was an unexpected experience for me when everybody else was having fun that I had to go soul search and begin to talk to the spirit that got me. And uh, I said, like I said before, nothing like praying because you think you could die and make you have to uh, connect spiritually. So you were more sensitive to marijuana and psychedelics. Does that mean out of body experiences or like you were more like behind the veil than everyone else? What did that feel like energetically? Well, in the beginning, I was, I was just uncertain to, as to why I was more sensitive. So I began to explore that by myself and to begin to begin a soul search. And uh, it was, uh, I had some very powerful revelations given to me. And as a young person, 16 years old, I had a full on Kundalini awakening. And uh, it went up, it just kind of ripped right up my spine. I stopped my head, hit the sky, it came down as fireworks, like a rainbow fireworks coming down around me. That was my first cosmic conscious experience. But I had stumbled on other supernatural experiences. <clears throat> so I realized that we are not so physical as we think we are here, how solid we are here, that we are uh, energetic beings. And uh, I just began to, um, you know, also I was younger trying to understand just my own self-awareness was, I was not that aware yet, so I was having experiences, but I didn't know how to make sense of it. I didn't have the questions. I just was experiencing and encountering things that, for, for the most part, I put away until I turned 21. And that's mm -hmm. when I had my really my awakening at 21. That was also triggered. Uh, my friends actually have dance parties. and I was in Marin County, California. We were going to school there. My friends in the College of Marin and these dance parties, somebody brought out some Buddhist Thai stick marijuana. It was very, very strong, and everybody smoked it, and it kind of wiped everybody out. One hit was, like, so strong. Yeah. I remember I had a, a fog in my mind, and my mind extended outside of my outside of my head, not in front of me. I could perceive this fog in front of me. And I said, I want to see through this fog. I want to clear my mind. I want to see through this fog. And then a beam of light penetrated the fog, hit me in the center of the brain, opened up my mind, and then my master began to speak to me. He said, it's time for you to 
wake up, remember, and learn. And that surprised me that here he popped in on me because I didn't know that about him before that. And then I had a flashback of all these experiences I had as a teenager that I had totally forgotten. They were like dreams that couldn't contain the memory of them. And also they flooded back on me and I realized, oh my God, I've been sleepwalking all this time. They alienated my friends who they were not, they didn't care about any of that. They wanted the music and social and this kind of thing, because I, I was saying that's all illusionary, but there's something bigger going on. And I found myself very alone and going through a dark night of the soul. And uh, so I, in my, in my grief, in my dark night of the soul, in my sadness, I had read that you have to go on a vision quest and go straight to the spirit to receive. And so I did, I prayed very, very powerfully and for three nights I prayed and I cried asking for guidance and help and the fourth day came and all my obsession and all my all my clinging or wishing for or, you know whatever I was lacking all that obsession frustration it all fell away and I felt very free that I had cleared my my conduit that I was not attached to anything but just just thankful that I got through that time and then that day, fourth day, I came up from college and I sat on my bed and I, my head began to vibrate. Uh, um, mm, and my head began to hum and a blue light came out of my forehead and it spun a big blue spiral in the room. And then a white cloud came to the wall and merged with and came back through my mind's eye. That was a, you know, like when my first jolt with this awakening. And then the next day, I came from college, sat on my bed, my mind's blank, no thought. And I had a spontaneous vision. It was a white cloud appeared to me. And then the white cloud became a, vi a vision screen. And I began to see people that I was close to. And I, just, I was in the future. And and then I saw me in the other part of my apartment. Like I see you right now. I was there in the future. And then I bilocated from here, observing me there. And I went into the future. And then I would gauge the future. And I was going back and forth between in this present moment versus the, the future, which was the present moment. I went back and forth between these two perspectives. And it kind of jolted me because a lot was happening that kind of knocked me off balance with all the situation that was unfolding. And it, as it knocked me off balance, I began to like uh, lose my focus, my, my, my center balance. And I pulled myself out of it. And it was enough that I knew that I needed to leave California and go find myself or leave college and go find myself somewhere in nature. Yeah.